everyone. I am Savannah Kepley and I am an 8th grade language arts teacher and I am here to share with you some tips and tricks for how I teach inference to my middle school students. So I don't know about you, but my middle school students always struggle with inference. Like when we go over those data reports and they're like, what questions do they miss the most? It is always the inference questions. And I don't know why that is. I mean, they are eighth grade students. They should know how to infer by now, especially since they've been doing it since kindergarten. But some kids really struggle with it. So I'm here to share my tips with you of how I teach inference. So let's get started. So first, we start with coming up with a class definition. Now, a lot of times, when we start talking about inference and what it means, they will say stuff like to make a guess or a reasonable guess. And while that is not wrong, I do not want my students to guess at anything. So I said, that's great, but we're gonna tweak it just a little bit. And for the purpose of our class, whenever we hear the word inference or infer, we're gonna think reasonable prediction. Now that sounds similar as the reasonable guess, but I'm just taking that word guess out of it because I don't want us to guess anything. I want us to figure it out based on clues in the text and our past experiences. From there we go on and we talk about how the author cannot write down everything. In fact, I do a little three minute activity with my students where I have them turn and talk and they kind of brainstorm some different reasons as to why the author would have the reader to infer. So we come up with things like if they wrote out everything, can you imagine how big the book would be? It would be like this thick and it's nothing you want to read. At the same time, it would be very cumbersome to read if the author is telling you every single thing and you're not figuring things out on your own. It would be very tedious to read as and no one wants to do that. So great writers have us infer. So it's a good thing to start figuring out things while we're reading. So let students know that it's not overwhelming. It's not a big deal. They have been doing this their whole life. They have been reading between the lines of like conversations and picking up on clues like tone and um, how people are acting. So like if you ask your best friend how she doing and she says fine, you know she's not doing fine. You're inferring that she is not fine based on her clipped tone and the way she rolled her eyes. So that's the clues that we're going to be picking up when we're reading a story. So tell them don't stress. We've been doing this a while. We just have to apply it to our text that we're reading. All right, so I'll let my students know that we come up with these inferences, these reasonable predictions based on clues from the text, and then we combine them with what we have already experienced in our own life. Then I teach them three steps that they can follow to make an inference. I like things step by step and systematic, and when we have steps and we can plug in our information, we're more likely to figure everything out. So, the three steps that they follow to make an inference. Step one, I want students to make predictions as they read. I tell them they have this inner dialogue going on in their head, and that's okay. They should be listening to that voice in their head, not in a weird way, but listening to what they're saying in their head while they're reading. That inner voice is constantly predicting what is going to happen next, why a character did something, and how others are going to react going to react. This is similar to what we do in real life, right? We look at conversations or we look at situations and groups of people together and we try to predict what's going to happen and we try to predict why people are doing what they're doing and how others are going to react. Or we can tell our students, for example, if your brother comes home, slams the door and throws his book back across the room, you're making an inference based on past experiences that he has not had a good day and that you need to stay out of his way right? You're doing this constantly. The second step to making an inference is again listening to that inner voice, but not just the predictions that it's making, 
but the questions that is constantly happening in your brain is a good reader is constantly asking those why questions like why is the character acting this way what led up to this moment where the character came into the room and slammed the door and threw their book bag so you're constantly trying to figure this out also you would ask yourself why did the author share this information why did the author choose the right that james came into the room slammed the door and threw his book bag there's a reason for that and we have to try to figure it out as we're going and finally the third step is to make connections with their life so that's part of the building the background knowledge you read about a character coming into the room slamming a door and throwing his book bag does that remind you of anything that's happened in your life and so when you ask students those questions are like yes that reminds me of my brother then you can say why did your brother do that because he was mad say the character is mad about something did the author say the character is mad and we're like no no we figured it out we made an inference based on his actions and based on the actions that the author showed us so we are inferring based on background knowledge of what's happened in our life from there after I give them those three steps we do a little activity where they practice inferring. So what we do is first, I showed them a picture of a cat and a mouse, and they have, and the cat's like staring at the mouse. Here, I'll show it to you right here. And they have to try to figure out or infer the character's inner thoughts. And this really teaches them to rely on that background knowledge and what they already know about these animals. So hopefully they will say something like, um, that looks yummy. <laughs> I really want that mouse for dinner and the mouse is like I got to get out of here or something like that so start really simple with pictures and then we go up to something that is relatable to them is I showed them a text message between two people looks like this so it says hey Sam can you come over tonight and play the new NBA 2k 23 did I say that right yes and then the other character says, oh, I wish I could, but I'm grounded until I can bring my Spanish grade up. And then, dude, this game is fire. You better get working so you can come over next weekend. And the guy gets, count me in next weekend. You can count me in next weekend. I'm going to rock out this test on Monday. So what I want the students to do from this text message is I want them to figure out things about the characters based on what it said and just those two little messages back and forth. I like doing this activity because it's relatable to them because they do a lot of, of course, they text all the time and it shows them it's kind of like tiptoeing into the inference world, right? It shows them that we constantly make inferences all the time, even with our friends in texting. And then finally, the third activity I like to do, and I think this is a lot of fun, so I show them product reviews on Amazon, and then they have to infer if the person liked the product or didn't like the product, and they have to infer the rating, like is it a one to five star rating based on the clues in the text. And so that one's a lot of fun. So after we do these three activities as a class, we do start to practicing this with our text. Now I read a class novel and I apply the standards with the class novel. So what I would do when I'm teaching inferencing, the day that we're reading is we'll read and then we'll fill out this graphic organizer based on what we read that helps them make inferences about the characters and the situations. And then from there, I will give them what I call an RTQT question where they will have to infer how the character is feeling based on the events in the text or they have to infer while the author included something based on what they know about the topic. So that's it. That is my short and sweet introduction to inference. I hope this helps you a little bit. So if you are a middle school language arts teacher and you are looking for creative, engaging, quality resources for your middle school classroom, I have a link for you below. It's for ELA Unlimited where you can download every resource that you need for your middle school classroom to help you teach the standards in a fun and engaging way. So that is linked below. Also I have links this inference mini lesson that you can use to um, teach this standard to your students. I have it available in ELA Unlimited and it's also on Teachers Pay Teachers. 
and I will also link the student video that goes with this lesson so if you want your students to follow along with this mini lesson they can watch that video. Until next time, happy teaching! Bye!